April 26, 2014, and let's just talk about what it is that the City Council needs to do at this point to create this zero waste initiative for San Diego. We can't get to sustainability without zero waste. The state looked at that and said if everything was recycled in California, it'd be the same as get rid of all the cars. So the result was that it was AB 341 from West Chesper who said the 50% goal for California was not enough in order to meet the governor's targets and because of resources and jobs, we're going to go to 75%. And what they looked at is that if all this material was, was liberated from the landfill, that instead of one job at the landfill, it would be 250 jobs in reuse, recycling, and repair. And, and by the way, there was a recession happening at this time, and they needed to create jobs. So it was about greenhouse gases, but it was about resources, really, providing industry, and it was about jobs. And what the state said to the city is, we're watching you. We can look at 50 or 75, but if you say zero, we put everything on the table. Now we can really look at our community. And what we found out is that... Uh, We've been ignoring upstream. We've been setting up the, we've been capturing the plastic and the metal and the glass. We do a good job, fairly good job. But what, what about the food? And what about feeding people? And what about the clothing? And what about reuse? And so now we're targeting back upstream because these are really economic generators in the community. And so a zero waste plan for a city is massive. It's a long-term commitment. What are gonna be the components? My sense is ban all durables and reusables from the landfill, charge a tipping fee, then stores get them reused. We got enough clothing to close enough people in Mexico just from San Diego alone. My closet, my God. <laughs> uh, then organics. The big piece here is half of what we have, the air borders say, get it out of the landfill, do it by next year, or we're going to legislate it. Let's get a composting facility. Let's get the nurseries. Let's get the farmers. Let's, get, let's make some rules here that allow us to have a couple composting facilities outside the county to feed our farms and then remanage our organic. So that's the second one. The third one, recycling industries. We invite all the recyclers to come in, people to talk about. I'm going to make a stationary out of waste paper into new paper again. I found stuff paper company actually does it. So where's the supply? Where's the demand? How do we make this all work together? And then the last one we was, was, was spe special discards, uh, take back programs. And it gets bigger than that because there are things, rules that we, we need to make uh, that says that if you sell it in our community, it's not recyclable, it's not compostable, you need to take responsibility for what happens to that after it's done. And so those stakeholder meetings will be recorded. We will then put them into a report and then the plan gets developed off that. What it really turns out to be uh, in both Oceanside and Fort Collins was didn't have to increase the budget. Didn't have to increase the budget. You just have to change the way you're doing things. It's a matter of a few new rules. And we found in the city, as soon as the city said, yes, zero waste is the goal, the staff started smiling again because there's everything was now available. They say, oh, that needs to be recycled. Oh, you shouldn't have that anymore. We should work on a, a purchasing policy, those kinds of things. The concept of product stewardship is part of a zero waste plan as well, and that is redesigning things at the front end right. so that when they're done, they either come back to the company or they're recyclable or compost. Right, so I'll use baby diapers, my favorite. 6% of what we throw out, so in Oceanside, that's 6,000 tons of diapers. It's a problem, you bury them in a landfill, is that what you build a landfill to diapers? No, you redesign that product so that it's just compostable or recyclable, period. That's what you do. And so it's about time on this planet we start looking at stuff and say, Oh, it has a half-life of 100 million years? Well, no, you can't do that. You gotta, it's got to be recyclable. Understanding that Earth is an island, Easter Island was an island, <laughs> uh, Nantucket is an island, and they're mining their landfill for things. And so uh, we, we have to get to the point where we understand that, and it's a culture change. So now let's get into the conversation of what does this zero-waste initiative in San Diego mean to Joe Citizen? People have got their blue bins and their black bins, and in 75% of the town, they've got their green bins for the yard materials. And so most people in San Diego have a good feel for recycling. So the, what happens now, we all say, well, why can't I recycle this? Or why can't I take my food and put that here? So what, what, what's coming up in this ordinance is to involve the community into the decisions about how do we make this thing work? How do we create jobs? And how do we pay for it? And the answer, of course, is to change the ordinance one more time and say, pay as you throw. So a pay as you throw system allows the city to charge a different price for the blue bin, the green bin, and the black bin. Everybody, property owner, pays for it. Every, the rules are the same for everybody. 
that finances the whole system by itself, creates $50 million for the parks and the cops and the libraries to get back on track. What's going to happen through this whole dialogue is that we're going to show all the things that we really want to do, all the great benefits, $80 million of new money into the economy, plus the $50 million of savings is going to be really good for San Diego, and people are going to want to do this. And this will allow the politicians to feel comfortable to put it on the ballot. How is the, the mindset, the culture, what's going to happen to these people that live in the city? Well, so I think the basic instinct to want to hunt, hunt and gather and, uh, and share, is, uh, barter, is going to be uh, enabled by giving more opportunities, by making it available. That is, if you had a, an aluminum can that you had your drink in and you wanted to recycle, and you were in the mall, you would see a recycling bin. If you wanted to get rid of your clothing uh, that you had too much because you got thin, you wanted to give it away, there'd be a, a pickup. You could either call a charity or there might be some other way to do it. So, But it'd be easy. It's the same thing with your sofa and your old chairs. Everything that you want to get rid of to make your life a little bit easier so you can get more stuff would be available for you to, to do it. And we would we, it wouldn't cost us any money. By reorganizing it, we would create more opportunities for jobs and more resources. My sense is that durable goods, whether it's a piece of plastic, old bowl that was cracked, wouldn't be allowed in the landfill. We would take it to a resource recovery park. We'd capture this value in an organized manner and then allow the different entrepreneurs to come in. It's not the American dream to own a home. It's the American dream is to own your own, own your own business. We're entrepreneurs, or country entrepreneurs. Why would we bury our resources in the ground, liberate them? We'd create hundreds of thousands of jobs. But the fact is we have all these landfills that have been permitted all through, and they have garbage in them, and they have been buried. And the only way you remediate an old landfill is you have to dig it out. So here it is. So you put all this time in it. But my sense is where these are where the composting facilities go. You already got it lined. It's, it's already permitted. And then at the same place that you put a big resource recovery park. Well, what's that? Well, at the landfill, we would have a place where there are reusables will go somewhere, paper, metal, glass, textiles, all the 12 categories, a composting area, a ceramics area for rocks. And literally, it's on the same site that used to be the landfill, but now it's called the resource recovery park and the composting facility. And this becomes the infrastructure for recovering these resources for reuse in this closed circle economy. If you made it mandatory to recycle, if you made the organics go out, if anybody who builds or destroys has to have a recycling plan, and if anybody sells something in our community, it, if it's not recyclable or not composted, there's a take back program, we'll get 90% just by changing the rules. Let your legislature, let your, let your people know that this is what you want. And this is what's going to happen. We're ready. It's an evolutionary thing. and It's just a matter of there will be 10 billion people on this planet in 20 years. And you're going to have to feed them, clothe them, or do something. We've set up a system that says put up as much trash as you want on the street. It ain't no problem. Why don't we want to say make a, make a simple separation? People can do it. People will do it. The only way they're going to do it is if everybody has to do it. But the fact is it's, it's everybody's desire to be as perfect as they can before they die. And so going to zero in terms of your impact on the environment, that's, only, that's, a, that's one thing we all can do. We all can take care of own, our own personal stuff. And our family, and our neighborhood, our job, our city, who knows our country. <laughs> I'd like to do that too.